Hello and welcome. My name is Meeples, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I want to talk about Static Shock, Rebirth of the Cool. This particular bind-up includes Trial by Fire and Rebirth of the Cool. The creative team for the former included Dwayne McDuffie and Robert L. Washington III on writing, John Paul Leon and Dennis Cohen on pencils, Steve Mitchell, Sean C. Martinborough, and Jimmy Palmiotti on inks, Noelle C. Giddings on color with assistance from Jay Brown, and finally Steve Haney on letters. Dwayne McDuffie continued to write on Rebirth of the Cool, rejoined by John Paul Leon as artist, Melissa Edwards now on color, and John Workman on letters. But before we get into the creator bios, let us take a minute to highlight a black YouTuber. As usual, this person has many, many more subscribers than I do, but I still hadn't really seen them before a couple months ago. So perhaps your YouTube feed has also been devoid of one FD signifier? Black media analysis and reviews, generally ranging in length from 30 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes, Signifier has some very interesting and deeply nuanced thoughts to express, and I would recommend you check them out. The character of Static was originally created by Dwayne McDuffie, Derek T. Dingle, Dennis Cohen, and Michael Davis. And I believe Trial by Fire was originally published in 1993, and Rebirth of the Cool came out in 2001. Both were published by Milestone Media. I knew nothing of Milestone Media before I picked up this book, but their Wikipedia page proved to be extremely interesting. A separate company, founded in 1993 by Dwayne McDuffie, Dennis Cohen, Michael Davis, and Derek T. Dingle. Christopher Priest was apparently involved in planning, but left for personal reasons before anything was published. They struck a deal with DC Comics to have all their comics published and distributed by DC, who retained a right not to publish, but editorial control and copyright stayed with Milestone. A black-owned company, Milestone Comics, created their own Dakotaverse that centered black superheroes. Moving along to the creative team. Dwayne McDuffie, co-founder of Milestone Media, was from Detroit, Michigan, attended University of Michigan for an English BA, then he received a master's degree in physics and attended New York University's Tisch School of the Arts. He helped develop Marvel's first superhero trading cards. He also did work on Justice League of America, Batman Blink, and even a run of She-Hulk. Robert L. Washington III was also from Detroit, Michigan, co-created Static, and wrote for Extreme Justice, The Batman Chronicles, and GLA Secret Files. John Paul Leon is the third creator on this project to die before he turned 50. He was from Miami and also did pivotal work on Earth X, penciled the further adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, and was reportedly a fan favorite on The Sheriff of Babylon. One of the co-founders of Milestone Media, according to his website, quote, Dennis Cohen is an accomplished and celebrated comic and animation creator and illustrator. Cohen has numerous credits to his name, including Black Racer, Deathstroke, Black Lightning and Hong Kong Fooey, Batman Lovers and Mad Men, Blind Justice, Black Panther, Flags of Our Fathers, The Question, Hardware, and Static, end quote. He also spent time as the Senior Vice President of Animation at BET and Motown Animation and Filmworks. Dennis helped develop and produce the first season of The Boondocks and drew the cover art for Liquid Swords, a platinum-selling hip-hop album from GZA and Genius of the Wu-Tang Clan. Moving right along, according to his portfolio website, quote, Sean Martinborough is the author of How to Draw Noir Comics, The Art and Technique of Visual Storytelling, published by Penguin Random House, and an Eisner Award-nominated artist whose comic book projects include... Batman Detective Comics, DMZ, Luke Cage Noir, The Black Panther, Man Without Fear, and Hellboy. Characters co-created by Sean are featured in Zack Snyder's Justice League, Deadpool, the animated Batman Gotham Knight, and the television series Gotham, The Gifted, and Batwoman. According to his portfolio website, quote, Jimmy Palmiotti is a multi-award winning comic book creator with a wide range of experience and background in advertising, production, editorial, film writing, media presentation, and video game development. Just a few of his clients include Nike, Disney, Warner Brothers, Lionsgate, Fox, and New Line 
2K Games, and THQ Nordic, end quote. Looking at her Comic Vine profile, quote, Noelle C. Giddings is an artist who has worked as a colorist in the comics industry. She served as color editor and colorist for the comic company Milestone Media from 1992 through 1995. She went on to work as a colorist for DC Comics. She has had 20 plus years in the business of comics, end quote. She's also credited for Static, Outlaw Nation, Zombie, and Robin. Clicking over to MarvelFandom.com, quote, James Brown, sometimes credited as J. Brown, is a colorist for Soto Colors, end quote. He's also credited with work on G.I. Joe, America's Army, Icon Hardware, Thunderbolts, The Transformers, Civil War Frontline, and X Nation to 2099 among other things. Steve Haney has profiles on Marvel Database, Dark Horse Database, DC Database, the Wikipedia, Valiant Comics Database, and the Forgotten Realms Wiki. Basically, all they each say about him is that he is a letterer. Comic Vine attributes work on Green Arrow, Static, Ghost, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Action Comics Weekly, Nexus, Spelljammer, Dragonlance, and Grendel to him, among many other titles, obviously. And my internet searching turned up basically nothing for Steve Mitchell. Keywords that came to mind reading this book. Arcade, high school, electricity, Spider-Man inspired, coming of age, family, and community. Flipping over to the back of the trade, they describe it as, quote, Like any awkward teenager, Virgil worries about girls, pocket money, girls, and getting beaten up. Getting beaten up. But recently, he's had even more on his mind. His newfound superpowers his secret identity, and girls. On a night of terror dubbed the Big Bang, Virgil Hawkins received incredible electromagnetic powers. As an enthusiastic comic book reader, he knew just what he had to do, so his swashbuckling alter ego static was born. A wisecracking crusader in a city infested with superhuman crime. Static is about to learn the hard way that as much fun as it is playing the hero, it's no game. End quote. So yeah, very Spider-Man-like, much like Miss Marvel did much more recently, and to equally good effect in my opinion. I finally watched Far From Home the other day, and I cannot stress how disappointed I've been with the way they've ripped Spider-Man from his working class and every man roots. So this read was a breath of fresh air. That said, I had never read a static title before, so everything was pretty brand new. Writing and art both seem pretty top-notch, especially considering how many Marvel art styles I'm not a fan of. I appreciated how low-key cartoony it all is, as well as the subdued color palette. There was also a fair amount of hair variety and very distinct character designs. The page layouts work well, and the flow moves at a good pace. Again, change as to at. Looking at the different kinds of representation, I like to talk about in every review. Obviously, Milestone Media was another example of Black people having to work twice as hard to write Black stories. The results effortlessly center Black characters in a way that felt, although my feelings should definitely be taken with a grain of salt as I am not Black, deeply authentic. Trading in some classic coming of age and coming into one's own powers trope, it never felt cliche. The way Black people are depicted artistically is also miles ahead of many other superhero comics of the time. Gender and sexuality felt pretty run-of-the-mill. Not the worst, but, as illustrated in the book's description, pretty heteronormative and seemingly pretty binary when it came to gender. As I already alluded to, it was nice seeing a working-class superhero who doesn't have tons of money to throw around. While we are obviously dealing with a lot of super able-bodied people, it is interesting to think about the way environmental toxins have impacted the lives of all the Bang Babies. There is also at least one character who is depicted in a wheelchair. I believe this is Curtis Metcalf, aka Hardware, but nothing across the interweb seems to confirm that Hardware was ever in a wheelchair, so I'm a bit confused. But yeah, to conclude, first time reader, and I'm left very interested in Dakotaverse comics, four to five stars. Bye all, keep reading, and organized and capitalist depression. And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.